I've had an interesting relationship with death. The thought of being around someone when they're passing away scares me. And it's actually hard for me to put into words what it does to me physically and emotionally. I understand that that likely sounds strange coming from a psychic medium. I literally talk to people on the other side for a living. And I've also spent a significant amount of time studying near-death experiences. But I did once hear that the price of being energetically sensitive like I am is that I'm sensitive. Perhaps it's that I feel death in a way in this human body that most can't. And that's not from a place of ego, but instead a recognition and honoring of how I feel things so deeply. And judging by the amount of tears I had while listening to Mary describe a sacred experience with her mom's passing, I know that there is more for me to uncover regarding the process of death and dying. Join me for Mary's story. This is the Highway to Healing. Oh, Mary, I am so excited to have you on the show today. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Delisa, so much. Yeah, and people listening that are familiar with Buddhist Biohacker on YouTube, or maybe you're in the uh, Ajatakash app with Lisa Gunshore, uh, Mary Lydia Ryan is probably a name that you've seen and, and hopefully heard before. She's an extremely uh, talented um I, I feel like this composer of like nature and elements and um, her music is something that's hard for me to put into words, but uh, touches me profoundly. So I'm excited to uh, be able to sit down and talk about a very different topic today. Thank you so much, Delisa, for that introduction. And I'm just uh, honored and delighted to be here speaking with you. I love what you're doing here on your platform, and I'm very happy to be able to share this story. Yes. And you are coming to us from uh, your goddess Sophia sailboat in Washington state. And I love it because I can hear the chime going in the background and I'm sure the waves will come and pick up yeah. and we'll hear that as well. So it's all part of the experience of it today's is. story. Yeah. Okay. Well, I just want to jump right into this because death dying, the transition to the other side is one that puzzles me, which might sound strange since I'm a medium and I communicate with people on the other side all the time, but the experience of leaving the human body, I feel it in ways that are hard for me to explain as a sensitive and as a medium. And it's something I've tried to avoid. So when someone around me is passing away, I, I really honestly, um, just being very truthful here, I try to avoid it wow. and yeah, because it hits me on so many different levels that the process of me being involved in that transition, uh, I don't want to say it haunts me, but it's kind of the best word I can use to describe what it's like being the person still standing on the earth plane as yeah. the other person transitions, yeah. but yeah. So your 90 year old mother is what I want to focus on today for this interview. You had mentioned to me that you spent seven days with her as she was going through this process. So take me, take the listeners back to that time. What had happened? So we'd gotten the call. Um, I'd gotten the call here in Seattle that my mother had it looked like a stroke and she had fallen and they, she was in the ER for the evening. They would be sending her home the next, um, next day with hospice. So I was able to fly into Salt Lake city and be there with my sisters as hospice brought her home from the hospital and set up her bed. We welcomed her there knowing this was our last week with her. And that, that began 
for me, a very profound reality that this is, okay, we're now going to be experiencing that, this transition of my mother. And I, I knew it was sacred. I didn't know exactly what that meant. I could feel in my heart, this was something sacred. And it started that moment and throughout the week, watching and listening to the family members and her grandchildren and her great grandchildren and you know me with my siblings her own children surrounding her hearing the touching communications of love and gratitude for everything she is and has been and it was as if i was watching the expansion of her passing, this transition, I could feel the heavens open. There was an opening. She felt like she was in this place between heaven and earth. And that beauty, the love, the peace, and again, this sacredness was all unfolding. And I was just being shown this new state of being that I am not familiar with. I have not known this in my lifetime until that moment. And it is a little hard to put into words. And it was really hard to leave that place because it was so beautiful and peaceful. So going back to her arriving back with her hospice bed and she's being prepared and, you know, the, in the physical, on the physical side of things, she was cared for very tenderly. The hospice nurses and the team we had, they were wonderful. They treated her with such utmost respect and care. And, you know, a, a big important part of this story is that my mom has lived in a little mother-in-law apartment off of uh, one of my older sister's homes uh, for, gosh, I think it's been 20 years now. And, so she's just become a part of that household and my sister that's housed my mother for all these years and her wonderful husband they have treated her with such beautiful care and um given her a really good life there and um so here we are in this little mother-in-law apartment that expands out into my sister's home. So it was this really lovely flow of, you know, people can come and visit her in her space. And then there would be all sorts of visiting out in my sister and brother-in-law's home. And I, so you mentioned my music. I'll skip over to here for a moment. My mother is an incredible musician. <laughs> and I, I do owe the, the opportunities that have opened up to me in my lifetime because of her love and passion for music. And I've been, I've been, uh, music has been a part of my life, my entire life. I don't remember not performing or singing or playing the piano. I've just always done it. And so this has been my entire life and my family is musical. And therefore, you know, their music just is rampant in our family and my nieces and nephews, they all play and sing and they, they play some sort of instrument or another. So here we are with this musical mother who has this legacy and incredible performer. And she actually just retired from her 20 year old gig at um, a well-known spot in Salt Lake City. She retired in September, Jeez. right before she was turning 90. Um, I'm sorry, it was the year prior. Was it the year? Now I'm the, oh, now that whole time warp thing is happening. That's <laughs> Maybe she lived, she it. worked until she was in her older years. Yeah, she had just retired from her, her one week, I mean, one day a week gig at the Joseph Smith Memorial Building in Salt Lake City, which is an historical um, monument there, historical building. And so we had, in addition to her, her lying there in her hospice bed, <laughs> we had, I know I'm jumping around and I'm trying to portray a picture here. Here we have this vessel that 
her spirit, we could feel was going in and out of her body. We knew that she was coming and going. We could feel her around us. And then she'd be back in her body and then she'd be off with, I'm sure, all her loved ones that she's been so eager to see. And, you know, and then we're here, the family members and friends, she's outlived all of her friends. She's outlived everybody. Um, and, but she has a lot of younger friends that have come to know that she's just given such tremendous service to over the years and they would be coming in and out. And, and back to this music, it was this combination of people singing, playing music in the background um, over here, hovering over her, touching her head, brushing her hair with their hands, showing her love, expressing how much she has meant to each of these people coming in. And another interesting thing, um, my mother didn't like to be touched. She was very, very warm, very, very charming, very warm, but she didn't like to be touched. And so it was kind of an interesting thing to have so many people being able to come in and it didn't feel wrong. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, you people shouldn't be touching my mother because she didn't like to be touched. It was, we all felt that she had allowed for this opportunity. She gave us this week to sit by her and brush her hair with our hands you know, touch her cheek, give her a kiss on the cheek. It was beautiful. We could feel her spirit was receiving all of this love and this tenderness that she wasn't really able to receive even while she was fully in her body. And then the music, it was just this extension of music and heaven and the angels hovering over her and her in and out it was literally a portal open where we were experiencing somewhere in between the physical earth and the heavens and and i mentioned the music that would be playing we could hear music wafting you know through the air from the background with various people coming and going and singing and playing their guitar while we're walking in and out of these spaces, my mother's space, my sister's space, while her body is hovering in and out, out of heaven. And it was this combination of energies and dimensions and existences all dancing with each other is the best word I know to describe. It was absolutely beautiful. And that really is what happened for seven days. It was a grand, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, honoring of this beautiful woman who was such an amazing matriarch, um, you know, and interestingly, she, she lives so simply. She, she didn't have a lot of money. She was very frugal, very, very good with the little money she does have. She didn't require much. She didn't ask for much. She was very grateful for the little that she had and was very grateful to my sister, my brother-in-law for, you know, just having the space for her for all these years and her dying wish. And she left this in her will. She had enough insurance money that would be coming in and she wants us to throw a grand celebration for her and so that's what's happening she um she ended up donating her body to science <laughs> which is so incredible too and I feel like she just went out giving to the very end giving back to everyone that's given to her showing her appreciation for her life. And then for the, all these years that she's lived, like I said, very simply with really not a lot of money and she wants us to celebrate and we are celebrating in style. And it's, we're so excited and that we're waiting until July because that's when, you know, things will be more opened up and people will be more free to gather. So 
we will be um, celebrating this wonderful space where we are planning a big musical event and being able to play some of her music that she's composed and some of her favorite songs that she's played over the years. And um, my siblings and I will be able to share songs that she used to sing with us and we would perform with her in a various array of, of musical amazingness and um, we'll be gathered for you know three days in the summer again to celebrate her another time with her insurance money that she insisted we use to do something wonderful with to celebrate her life and um, I I know I'm kind of jumping around here I feel like you're following because I'm over here bawling my eyes out. So (laughs) I am hoping, you know, as I'm speaking about this, my energy is being taken back. (laughs) I can feel that space again. And like that space I'm talking about that was between heaven and earth. And, um, it was such a beautiful space and I didn't want to leave that my mother you know I okay I need to go back to how we were able to then share her actual moment of transition I mentioned you know all the musical family and my nieces and nephews There were like three nights in a row that we had gathered to sing around her just to, because we can, and we love to sing and she loves music. And we tried to keep as much music going for her in her room as possible. And, um, you know, in the evening, there were like three evenings, we would go in there. There was just a small group of us, my sisters, some of my nieces and nephews. And there was this little teeny baby in there too. Um, And it was so beautiful to have his energy, little Eli and his angelic energy that he added to this mix of us singing to my mother and he would squeal, you know, make his little baby sounds. And it was so perfect and beautiful. And we would just start toning. We just decided let's just tone. We just sang oohs and ahs in our own voices and it didn't matter we weren't worried about what anyone else was saying but we were joining together we were hearing each other and singing off of each other while surrounding my mother and you know I hadn't really mentioned that a lot of my music the last couple of years has become sound healing. And this is a thing that I do. I tone. I'm accustomed to doing this for other people in individual sessions and in group sessions. And it's very profound. And it's it's very healing. It moves energy. I certainly wasn't trying to move my mother out of her body by doing this. This was more of an act of, we love you. This is an expression of love. And all of us in that room are familiar with this toning and how, how powerful and beautiful it can be. So we just decided let's just tone to my mother and to her, to all of these grandchildren. She's Granny D. And we came together in energy and listening to each other and focusing our love and attention to my mother. And as we begin toning this beautiful, gentle symphony of voices just came together, unrehearsed, completely pure and beautiful and angelic. And the the power of that energy of that love coming through our voices together was so palpable also. And it was reaching through into this space between the heavens and the earth and holding my mother. And I could feel it, we could see it. So we did that for a couple of nights. And then on, I think it was the third night we came in. This was Thursday, December 10th. And, you know, the day prior to this, the hospice nurses said there was no way she was going to 
make it through the night. I mean, they expected she'd be gone by that afternoon. And this was like 32 hours later, she had held on for two more grandchildren that were able to fly in. My son was the very last grandchild that was able to fly in and she waited. <laughs> and I was so grateful to her. And it was around 10 o'clock at night. We decided to go sing to my mother again. And here she'd been hanging on for, you know, at least 32 hours longer than they'd given her. She'd even gotten color back in her hands. And the nurse is like, who does that? How does that happen? Her, her heart started pumping blood back into her extremities. But by, you know, 10 o'clock on the 10th of December, we meet again in this room, just a small group of us. I think there were only eight of us in the room at this point. And we began toning to her again, just purely to help her feel comfort while she's lying in her bed, not knowing when she'll leave us. And we were singing to her for about 15 minutes, the same thing, just bringing our voices together and enjoying the interaction of our voices and our energies and feeling her energy receiving what we were giving to her. Just, it didn't have to sound pretty and it wasn't necessarily in harmony or anything and yet it was so beautiful and the energy of love coming through was so palpable. And about 15 minutes in, her breathing shifted and we kept watching and we just kept singing. And my, my sister that was in the room took her camera over wanting to take a photo of her. And while we were just in this moment, she was on her last breaths and my sister went to take a photo accidentally hit record we have 20 seconds of earthly angels singing to my mother as she took her last breath and it's hard to put into words what happened at that moment as she took her last breath, I could feel her energy leave. The heavens were already open. We could feel her being received into the heavens and the loving arms waiting for her. And there was just this energy of absolute love. And what do you do with that? You just want to sit in it. Right. And she left us in this absolute beautiful container of love as she departed. And it was so obvious to me that death is sacred. There is no question to me, and this moment has changed my, my everything, my beingness, my how I want to prepare, or how should I say this, help others be able to share and recognize how sacred and beautiful this is, and how I am so hopeful that our society here in the Western civilization return to the sacredness of passages and transitions from life to death, like the elders and the ancients of our earth have done. May we <laughs> rekindle this sacredness and these ceremonies. We weren't trying to have a ceremony, but it turned in to the most glorious passing ceremony for my mother.
that I didn't know we would be able to hold and we did. <laughs> I, I, I don't have the words. Um, I mean, tears have just been streaming down my face this entire time. And I felt like I was there. So glad. Yeah. I know that took a lot of courage and vulnerability in sharing the story. Uh, what is your mom's name? Norma D. Oh, beautiful. You know, for people listening, before we close out, maybe those people that are like me that have a hard time processing death, transition, or maybe somebody listening that feels like it might be their time coming up. Do you have any like kind of parting thoughts or words of wisdom that you'd like to, to share with the audience? Two things that are really coming up strongly for me. And I felt this before speaking with you today. I have felt very strongly that my mother wants me to share this with others to hopefully be able to spark that desire to have a, it doesn't have to be a ceremony, but just be able to have a similar experience of experiencing that sacredness of that parting. And the second thing is, is that, you know, you don't have to sing. I'm not here saying that now I think you should tone to your loved ones that are departing. However, if you feel you can muster the courage to bring that tone up through your voice, even if it's an ohm, there is something magical that we have in our human bodies and in our vocal cords, whether we consider ourselves someone able to sing or not, there is a power in our vocal cords. And as we move our love up from our core over our vocal cords and out to the person that we are extending this love to, on their deathbed, or even in our, you know, this may be the last time we see them. Maybe we don't know it's the last time we'll see them. There is going to be, if you can think in your mind, this is a moment where I can offer this tone of love and just the love you feel that we normally express, I love you. What if you try that just by singing, mm with the thought and the feeling of an expression of love? Or what if you just sing, I love you. See what that does to you and see what that does to the person receiving and you will be amazed. Mary, I know that you are amazing. And I know that your mom's desire uh, to share and to celebrate was honored today by you speaking up and telling us about that experience. It definitely was and is sacred. And I know that you touched many hearts today, including mine. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. For more information on Mary and her amazing music, go to IamMaryLydiaRyan.com. Stories like this one are important to tell. It reminds us that even during the darkest times, we can always find light. We can always choose faith over fear. For exclusive content, please join my Spark Plug members only community and apply to be a guest on this show. Find out more at spiritandspark.com.